David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. One thing that I always enjoy about this hobby is when a company tries to do something a little different. Uh, maybe it's a unique design or a unique filling system. Uh, the pen I have to show you today is one from Diplomat, which has a very unique design element that I had never seen before. Uh, it was launched about a year ago, and the pen is called the Nexus. What I am going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique pen. Uh, I'll show you how to ink it up, uh, and then I'll talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. Uh, we'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Yaffa Brands, who are the U.S. distributor for Diplomat, as well as many other brands, for providing this pen for review. Now, this pen is available in a few different colors. There is the solid blue, the solid black, and the solid green. Uh, and then there are some models with clear barrels, and those are available in both black as well as blue. The pen arrives in this rather large box. There is a lot going on with this box and with this pen. And so I'm thinking that uh, this is a pen which is better shown in action rather than just talking about it. So I thought I would mix things up here a bit and do an unboxing and show you how to ink up this pen. So let's do this. Uh, let's start with some measurements and then join me over here at camera two for a closer look at this intriguing pen. Okay, here we have the Diplomat Nexus. Uh, to begin here, uh, I'm going to need you to use your spatial awareness skills. This is a rather large box, if you see, and it will not fit completely in the frame. So uh, one thing I have always really liked about these boxes is it's a metal, uh, and then it just slides over the top. Uh, they use a smaller version of this box for the arrow, and I've always liked that. But the top slides off. And we have a couple of things here. There is this little flap that comes up. Uh, and over here, we this part comes out. Let me go ahead and get this out. And we have some ink, uh, as well as a couple of compartments here. We'll get back to this in a second when we ink up the pen. Then over on this side, we have some instructions, which are actually very helpful. Um, there was a business card in there as well, uh, but there are some instructions on how to ink up this pen, which uh, you'll see here in a bit uh, are very useful, just because it is intuitive, uh, but it just takes some explaining to uh, understand what's going on there. And then right on this side, we have the pen. And as you can see here, I have one of the blue clear versions. So here is the Diplomat Nexus. Um, the cap and trim is made from metal, and then we have the transparent barrel here. Um, I'm really fond of this blue. I just really think it pops. Uh, I do find this chrome trim to be a bit of a fingerprint magnet, so I do find myself uh, rubbing that down uh, on occasion. You will notice that there is a rod in here. This isn't a vacuum filler, but there's some aspects of it that are like a vacuum filler. This is more like a, a traditional Japanese eyedropper, where there is that rod that creates a, um, a separation or basically a seal between the section and the ink chamber. Uh, and how that uh, section is managed and how that seal is managed is rather unique, and I'll show you here in a minute. But first of all, let's go over some of the parts and features of this pen. Uh, first off, here at the end, we have the Inkdrop Maltese Cross, which is Diplomat's logo. Uh, then we have the clip, which has a decent amount of strength to it, uh, but I find that it works in a variety of materials. I really like the Inkdrop logo that's here that's cut out of the clip. So, the, and I like the fact that you can see the blue underneath. I just think that's an, a neat design element. It almost looks like the there's something painted on there or that the metal is blue, but no, that's just cut out and you can see beneath it. 
The barrel is straight. Uh, and then it comes to this chrome piece, which signifies the end of the barrel. Um, the transition from the barrel or the cap to the barrel uh, just is very, very slight. Uh, and then you can see that everything is straight. And here on the end, we have the Diplomat logo and, and it has the number of the pen. Um, I have heard that this is a limited edition, but nowhere could I find uh, exactly how many they were going to be making. But I think that, that looks nice and sharp. And that also the weight of this pen is significant, but it's a good weight. Um, it just feels very solid. I, I almost liken it to a Conid model to where when you pick it up, it just feels very solid, but in a quality kind of way. Okay, the cap twists off with just about one ro full rotation. And underneath we have a few couple of things going on here. First of all, we have this number six stainless steel nib. Um, I believe that this nib is available in either extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. Uh, and there is a look at the plastic feed. You can see this particular nib is an extra fine. I don't test too many extra fines, so this one should be interesting. Uh, the section angles up just slightly. It is metal. Um, I do find it to be a bit on the slick side. It would be very, very slick if it wasn't for these grooves. Uh, and so I find it just to be on the edge. I, I wish it was a, maybe there was uh, something in the way of being concave or something, but I do find it to be a little bit slippery. Uh, and then there is a stair step transition uh, from the section until the threads, which are kind of large and blocky. And I actually kind of like the design element here of there's lines here on the section, and then you can see lines here uh, for the threads. And so it's just kind of a continuous set of lines, which is interesting. And then there's a small step up to the barrel. But as I mentioned previously, there is a unique portion uh, to this, or a, a unique element to this, and that is that the section actually kind of moves. Do you see that? So let me actually take this off and show you what it is doing. Um, first of all, there is a nice uh, O-ring here because you are basically going to be eye-dropping this pen. And you can see here that that, that is the end of that knob, which then what happens is when the section goes on here, it is, we'll say close to being sealed. What happens is that when this pen is being used or when you uncap it, uh, and then that there is an opening basically between the ink barrel and the section. So it's free. You don't need to crack anything in the back to keep the ink flowing or anything along those lines. But what happens is when you actually cap this pen, then what happens is that this pushes down and you can see it pushes in the back and that it creates that seal. So, you know, actually you can kind of see it happening when I press this down and then let me do that. And you can see the spring in the, in the back working there. And so what happens is when you cap it, it seals off the section. Uh, and so that it, uh, helps the ink from drying out uh, and and that also uh, helps when during travel to where it seals off that section. So it's something that's a very unique and different design. It's just something I hadn't really seen before, but it serves a practical purpose and I appreciate that. Plus, I kind of like the looks of this barrel. I like the blue that pops here. And then as we'll see here in a second, when we ink this up, uh, you're going to get a really good look at your, at your ink situation here in this barrel. Speaking of inking up, uh, I showed this previously, but the, the pen comes with a bottle of the Diplomat Royal Blue, uh, and then this little container. And that there's two holes up here. One is filled with plastic and one is not. So it was just a little confusing to me at first, but I think you'll get the idea of what's going on. What happens is that when you need to go ink up your pen, you take off the section and you can put the section in the plastic portion. That is so that if there's any ink in here, it's gonna go into that plastic. And then you take your barrel and you could put it over here.
And then something that I didn't show you previously when I was showing you the box is they include these rather large pipettes. Uh, they are really uh, not messing around with these pipettes. They probably could have done with uh, something a little bit smaller, but uh, these are very large to use. So what you end up doing is you uncap your ink here and you take this enormous pipette and you squeeze the end and then let it go and it gets a pretty good fill in there. And then you just release it into here. And you can see, I know it was an odd angle, but it filled it right on up. And one pipette pretty much filled it to the brim. So let's go ahead and recap this. And then we're just going to place this back together. Uh, and then we're going to do ourselves a writing sample. Actually, first, let's do some size comparisons. Uh, first of all, here it is with another diplomat. This is the Excellence A. And then here it is with a uh, diplomat arrow in the nice turquoise. Uh, and then here is the Diplomat Elox, which essentially is just like an arrow. Well, that's just like an arrow, but the same uh, size as the arrow uh, in shape. But then it has different designs on the barrel. I have one that's in the Matrix theme, which is cool. And this one has these rings, which I think are nice as well. And then for some non-diplomat pens, we have a Platinum 3776. I believe that's the Carnelian Red. Uh, and then we have the Montegrappa Venezia. Uh, and then here is a Delta Dolce Vita. That's actually the uh, newer Dolce Vita model. In regard to uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with that arrow. And then here it is with the Delta. And here it is with the Platinum 3776. Here we go with the writing sample for the Diplomat. Nexus. And this is an extra fine stainless steel nib. Um, I will say that when I inked this pen up for the first time, I was impressed with the uh, the capillary action here because it isn't like you're sucking ink up normally if you had a converter where you suck ink up and then ink is kind of automatically in the section uh, and it, you can quickly write. This one, for the very first time, almost if you put in a cartridge, it has to work its way down. And it did so fairly quickly. So I, like I said, I was impressed with that capillary action. And the ink that we're using here is the ink that came with the pen, which is the Diplomat Royal Blue. This is what the ink looks like. It's a, a nice royal blue that on the heavier applications, you could get some nice shading in there. In comparison to some other royal blues, there could be a wide variety of colors. Uh, this is the Mont Blanc's royal blue, which is a little bit more purple. Uh, and then there's Faber-Castell's royal blue, which is a bit lighter. There is the Caveco royal blue, which is a bit more purple and saturated. And the SD DuPont. Royal Blue, which is a bit lighter. And then finally here is the Pelican 4001 Royal Blue. And then this is what the bottle looks like outside of its little container there. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, usually fine and extra fine nibs are just not my thing. Um, a lot of them, for me, tend to be a bit on the scratchy side. Um, I would say this one is not necessarily scratchy. It does have a fair amount of feedback, um, especially for an extra fine. 
but I find it pleasant to use. It's not super smooth. It does have some feedback to it. In regard to ink flow, I think it's a bit on the lighter side, which is, you know, which should be uh, the way when it comes to something that is an extra fine. In regard to reverse writing, it does catch a little bit and is a little scratchy. But then in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up well. So there we have the Diplomat Nexus. I think it's just a really sharp looking pen. I do like how the ink in this barrel is sloshing around. And I do think that that royal blue is a good match for this pen. So that was a nice combination that they included. Um, this pen is available from a large number of retailers and sells for $316. Uh, I, you know, I don't think that that's an unreasonable price for this pen. It brings something unique to the table, um, and it's just very solid and very well built. Uh, it's one of those pens, as soon as you pick it up, you're like, oh man, this just feels very solid. And then on top of that, it provides something unique. Uh, and so I like things that are unique, and so I, uh, I care for this pen. Until next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.